In the last video, we looked at a quadrilateral that had opposite sides of equal lengths, and we showed that those opposite sides were parallel to one another, and thus concluded that it was a parallelogram. Now the next thing that I want to go over is one more property of parallelograms, which is that the diagonals of parallelograms are going to bisect one another. So over here we have a parallelogram. Side AB is parallel to side CD and side AC is parallel to side BD. So what does it mean that the diagonals of a parallelogram would bisect one another and how do we prove that? Well, firstly, what it means for the diagonals of a parallelogram to bisect one another is that if we were to draw in our two diagonals, this is our first diagonal, CB, that is our first diagonal, and our other diagonal that is going to join side A to D is going to look like that. So we have our two diagonals drawn in here. And if these diagonals were to bisect one another, what that would mean is that the line AD is going to split this diagonal CB into two equal parts and vice versa. So if they were bisecting one another, it means that one diagonal cuts the other diagonal into two equal sized pieces. And the other diagonal is likewise going to cut the other one into two equal pieces. So if these two diagonals bisected one another, that means the length of side A to this intersection point is equal to D to the intersection point. And that means that C to the intersection point is going to be equal to B to the intersection point. So if we were to call this I, let's just label this I as the intersection point. So what we're trying to prove when we are proving that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect one another is that CI is going to be equal in length to BI because that would mean that the diagonal AD cut CB into two equal parts. What we're also trying to show is that AI is equal in length to DI and that would mean that the diagonal CB cut the diagonal AD into two equal parts. So that is what it means for diagonals to bisect one another, that it's going to cut them into two equal parts. And how can we go about proving that? Well, what we already know about this shape is that we have the opposite sides that are parallel to one another. And since we have parallel lines, we can think of these diagonals as transversals. We actually have two transversals here that are cutting through our parallel lines. And we know from our previous videos that when we have parallel lines that are being cut by transversals, we are going to have a few special angles that are created, alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, co-interior angles. These are all things that we had covered in the previous videos. Let's start off by labeling some of our alternate interior angles because since these lines are parallel, we know that those are going to be equal. Let's actually first start out by just labeling these as 1 and 2 so that we can easily differentiate between the two separate angles that we've created at each of these points. We know that B1 is going to be equal to C2 because these are alternate interior angles. We also know that C1 is going to be equal to B2 because they are also alternate interior angles. If we look at this transversal in green, we know that A1 is going to be equal to D2 because they are alternate interior angles. And we know that A2 is going to be equal to D1 because those are alternate interior angles. So let's just make a note of that right here. We know that B1 is equal to C2, that C1 is equal to B2, that D1 is equal to A2, and that A1 is equal to D2. And that is because they are alternate interior angles and because our lines are parallel. 
and here I've used the shorthand for parallel. So because our lines are parallel, and because these are all pairs of alternate interior angles, we know that these angles are equal to one another. Now in addition, because we know that this is a parallelogram, and we are trying to prove that in a parallelogram, our diagonals are going to bisect one another, we know that side AB is equal in length to side CD, and we know that side AC is equal in length to side BD, and that's just because we know that this is a parallelogram, and that's one of our properties of parallelograms, that not only are our opposite sides parallel, they are also equal in length to one another. So let's just put in that we know that this side length is equal to this side length, we know that this side length is going to be equal to this side length, and I apologize if it's getting a little bit messy here. The idea is just that this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side. So now we have something very interesting about this shape. We can see that, in essence, we've created four triangles. So we have these two triangles that are opposite one another that are going to have this light blue angle and a purple angle, a light blue angle and a purple angle, and they have this red side, this side CD, which is equal in length to side AB. So both of them have a common side length, AB in this top triangle and CD in this bottom triangle that is common in length. And they have these two angles that are equal in length. And by the angle-angle side rule, that is one of our rules for testing congruency in triangles. When we have two corresponding angles and one corresponding side equal between two triangles, we know that those triangles are congruent. So we know that triangle CID is going to be congruent to triangle BIA. So we know that triangle CID is congruent to triangle BIA, and that is because of the angle-angle side rule. By that same logic, we know that triangle CIA is going to be congruent to triangle BID, again, because we can see that they are going to have two corresponding angles and one corresponding side equal. We have this orange angle and this dark blue angle, which is common between these two triangles. And we have this side AC, which is equal in length to side BD of the other triangle. So they have two angles and one side in common between them. So by the angle angle side rule, we know that these two triangles opposite one another are also congruent. So we know that triangle CIA is congruent to triangle BID, again, because of the angle angle side rule. If these triangles, these two pairs of triangles are congruent, we know that not only are they going to have all corresponding angles equal, they're also going to have all corresponding sides equal. And that means that this side, CI, the corresponding side for CI in our other triangle is going to be BI. It is going to be this side. So these sides are corresponding sides in our two congruent triangles, so we know they're going to be equal in length. If we were to flip this triangle 180 degrees, we're going to see that this side is going to overlap with this side. Then we also know that this side, DI, is going to be equal to side AI. Those are corresponding sides in our congruent triangles as well. And so what we have just proven with this is that the diagonal AD is going to split CB into two equal portions because we know that the side length CI is equal to the side length BI. These are going to be corresponding sides, so they have equal lengths. So we know that these two are equal in length. We also know that AI is equal in length to DI. The diagonal CB has split AD into two equal lengths. AI is equal in length to DI. These are equal in length because they are corresponding sides of our congruent triangles. So we have just proven that in a parallelogram, the diagonals are going to bisect one another. 
each of the diagonals are going to split the other diagonal into two parts of equal length. So let's just make a note of that here. We know that AI is equal to DI, and we know that CI is equal to BI because they are corresponding sides of congruent triangles. And what we have also shown with this is that in parallelograms, the diagonals are going to bisect one another. So diagonals of parallelograms bisect one another. And that is going to be one of our main takeaways from this lesson. This is another property of parallelograms which we have just proven to be true.